Gallimera, Gallimera, Gallimera. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, a little bit of a sore head this morning. Today is Jane's day off, so uh, we went out last night and uh, we went to the little taverna down the road from where we are. Uh, we had a few wines last night. Uh, just sat out in the beautiful uh, evening. It wasn't cold or anything else like that. Uh, just chatting with some of the locals as well. Some people on holiday over from Athens. Uh, and just basically had a very, very pleasant evening. Well, at the moment, as you can see here, this is the lovely Nelly. Uh, she is now uh, reclining. I've uh, been up early this morning feeding all the, uh, uh, feeding all the animals. <laughs> uh, still no sign of little Herbert for those people wondering what's become of Herbert. Um, I think we've just got to basically turn a corner and say that uh, the little fella isn't coming back. Um, it, it, it's The worst part is not knowing and uh if uh you know what his last moments were or anything else like that uh so um anyway bless him uh, wherever you are herbie i hope you might just turn up you never know but uh we're becoming a realist now at this and uh, probably he's not coming back um can i also say thank you as well to everybody uh that's been um sending messages uh, to my old mate uh, Wiggy Wynn Stanley over in Cyprus, the ambassador for Northern Seoul there. Um, he's on the mend at the moment. Uh, I spoke to him just briefly before coming on. Uh, he's looking a lot better than what he, he did look the other day. Uh, once again, he sends his thanks to everybody and people who are perfect strangers who don't know him. Um, it means a lot that people are looking in and uh, wishing him good words and uh, want him to actually get better as well. Uh, the nice thing as well is that people have spoken to him uh, who've had the same medical problems and have spoken to him, uh, you know, uh, via the wonders of the Internet. That's one thing the Internet is good for is very cheap communication. And I see Wiggy's looking in at the moment who've been uh, talking medical cases with each other and basically uh, giving him a bit of a morale boost. Uh, so once again, thank you to all those people, whether you're RAF Reg or whether you're uh, civilians, uh, also um, wives as well and uh, friends of the regiment as well who've been dropping messages and support as well for Wiggy. Uh, once again, he sends his uh, sincerest uh, thanks as well. Anyway, uh, Tracy Mitchell says, morning, Ginch. Hope your head's feeling better soon. Laugh out loud. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. Um, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> just uh, switch the screen round so you can actually see my head. Uh, switch it. There you go. Uh, you'll notice I'm also wearing the Northern Soul shirt that uh, the lovely Wiggy Win Stanley sent me all the way from Cyprus. Keeping the faith. There you go. Uh, once again, thank you for that, Wiggy. He asked that I wore it this morning just because uh, it made him feel... Uh, he just wanted me to wear it, basically, bless him. But anyway, uh, let's go to the news, what's been going on in Greece and also what's happening a little bit in the UK as well. Um, so, uh, first of all, let's talk about the weather. <laughs> uh, lively, uh, lovely Amanda this morning said, Morning, Ginge. Tuesday's weather slowly creeping up. Remember, we've got a heat wave on the way at the moment. Uh, sunny, warm weather. Highs of 31 today, but it's going to feel like 35. She says, have a great, a great day. She then sent me a later message, which said, uh, uh, we had a white sun coming up this morning. Alan thought it was the moon. <laughs> Laugh out loud. There is no breeze. The sea is like a mill pond. It's going to be hot, and it certainly was. Jane was up at the shipwreck yesterday, and it was uh, a scorcher up there yesterday. Uh, but I'm going to talk about the, the shipwreck in just a short while anyway. Anyway, uh, rivals today, it looks like it's a very busy day at the airport today. Uh, we've got two flights in from Athens. Uh, we've got two in from Slovenia. Uh, four flights in from Poland. One in from Brussels. One in from Paris. One in from Romania. We also have two flights in from Italy, from Venice of all places. Lovely place, Venice. Uh, we have one flight in from Bucharest, which is in Hungary, if you're not quite sure. And we also have two flights in from Sweden as well. Uh, so, yeah, the Swedes have arrived and they are now enjoying their holidays. I know Jane's been working with the Rets for the last week or so, sorting out and helping them uh, to find their feet here on the island. And as you can hear, the chickens are in the house at the moment, helping themselves to what's left of the cat food. Anyway, um, 
COVID in the last 24 hours, well, got to be honest, it's on a downward trend, which is good. Uh, only 209 new infections across the country. That was down from 248 on the previous report. Um, entries into the country are also down as well. Uh, there were seven I last reported to you. Uh, as of yesterday, there were four new cases identified after entries into the country. Um, and according to the national stats yesterday, uh, there were no new cases reported here on Zakynthos. And once again, they're only publishing uh, areas that go into double digits at the moment. And of course, uh, we're not any of those areas. Uh, so again, for the uh, month of June so far, it is still six cases of uh, coronavirus have been detected here on Zakynthos. Now, when it comes to deaths, unfortunately, the death uh, number has crept up a little. Uh, we had 14 new deaths reported on my previous report. Now it is 17 new deaths across the country. Once again, that brings the death toll up to 12,565. 96.4% of those people had underlying health problems or were over the ages of 70. And again, our condolences to people that have been affected uh, at this time. Uh, when it comes to ICUs at the moment, uh, critical cases in hospital, uh, that's down at the moment. It's dropped quite a bit, actually. Last I reported to you, it was 296. That's now dropped down to 283, of which 180 are male and 103 are female. So there you go. Those are the stats for today. And Greece is still on a downward trend at the moment uh, with our infection rates and our death rates and also our... Um, incubation rates in hospitals which is all which is all good for us also as well this morning a story came out hot off the press uh, the use of protective masks in public in greece uh, will likely be restricted uh, only to indoor and crowded settings within the coming weeks this is what some of the greek experts have been uh, saying at the moment here uh, from the Special Advisory Committee. Anyway, in comments on Greek Sky TV, uh, microbiology professor Alavadas Vatopoulos uh, indicated that given the continued drop in the new infections and the increase in vaccination coverage, uh, the committee will be recommending that masks are scrapped on the street on a day-to-day -day basis and in other uncrowded open air settings. Anyway, he said uh, by early 2022, uh, we will be treating the coronavirus like flu. Uh, he also said that he did not rule out the likelihood of a fresh wave in the fall. That's the autumn for those people not Americanized, uh, mainly among the unvaccinated. He also said that the emergence of variants that are res resistant to the existing vaccines is also likely explaining that viruses are continually changing in that case. He added vaccines can adapt or argumented uh, or be augmented with a booster shot. So there you go. Uh, looks like masks might be on the way out, hopefully. Uh, but I've got to be honest with you. My experience at the moment, some people wear masks, some people don't wear masks. Most people having the common sense to put a mask on when they're going into a restaurant or going into a shop. But in general, most people are walking around uh, without wearing masks. I wear a mask when I'm riding my scooter simply because I don't want a 300 euro fine. But if I don't have to wear it, trust me, I'll be the first person to be taking my mask off. That is for sure. Anyway, um, Greek destinations and tourism businesses uh, need to adapt. Uh, this is what they're saying here from the head of the tourism marketing firm uh, Mindhouse uh, following a latest survey from the European Travel uh, Commission. Anyway, published on Saturday, the survey found that 51% of Europeans are ready to travel outside peak season and four in 10 are willing to pay more uh, to avoid crowds. Moreover, 37% are prepared to pay more to leave uh, a, a smaller carbon footprint. Anyway, uh, this uh, um, gentleman, uh, Eduardo Santander, uh, said sustainable uh, development is a major opportunity. Not only can destinations improve the environment and safeguard natural resources, they can also increase uh, tourism benefits for locals and protect their culture and heritage. I've got a feeling, I think what we are going to see is a shift towards maybe full-time tourism 
heroism here. I, I, I know it's been a uh, talk of uh, Greece for a long time, but we do have the weather. Somebody just the other day asked me about what the weather was like here in the winter. And I have a feeling that with everything that's gone on with the pandemic, that there might be a case now of businesses will survive and businesses will obviously go by the way. But in the long term, uh, businesses are obviously generated by the amount of tourism that we see. So what might happen is we might see a smaller, shall we say, uh, attachment for tourism, as in less restaurants, less um, uh, places uh, to go, the smaller bars and that. But we may see that we might have more tourism across the board for the whole year. So some will survive and some will die because, again, uh, it's going to be a change of mindset. And also it's going to be a change of the way the, cu the country does business. This sort of six years, uh, sort of six months of tourism and then all of a sudden this six months off and then it regenerates again. Um, I think... If tourism is going to survive in Greece, it's going to be 365 days a year. And if people are prepared to pay more to come away, and if people are prepared to travel out of season uh, for a better price, um, I think it's something that uh, I think the country is going to have to explore. And I think it's something here in Zakynthos that the local tourism businesses are also going to have to explore that as well. So. This is, I think, something for the future, and I think it is very relevant at the moment. Um, also, as well, yesterday we had a plane crash in the Peloponnese. Uh, police say a pilot and a passenger of a small single-engine plane that fell in uh, the Peloponnese. Uh, the plane fell uh, early uh, Monday afternoon, about 16 kilometres east of Pyrgos, uh, which is uh, just down the road from Kalini, if those people know uh, where Kalini Port is. Anyway, firefighters uh, rushed in that area to the village. Uh, however, they found that the passenger and the pilot were also dead inside the wreckage. So our condolences uh, to those uh, people for their loss. Um, Interestingly, a bit of news from the UK. Uh, thank you to a gentleman who sent me this this morning. I thought I would uh, write this. Remember, today, 21st, was supposed to be, well, yesterday was supposed to be Freedom Day. And today would have been your uh, day after Freedom Day when everything was supposed to all to go back to normal. Well, anyway, uh, quarantine free travel for the fully vaccinated. Uh, this is coming from the British government is absolutely something the government is working on. Old Matt Hancock was telling Sky News yesterday and he said, uh, when I'm in a position to be able to say something, then we will do. Uh, the health secretary, uh, uh, Matt Hancock, told the Sky News. I could just hear the tone in my head, actually. Uh, quarantine free travel to amber list countries for people who have been fully vaccinated is absolutely something the government is working on. Uh, the health secretary told Sky News uh, this hasn't been uh, clinically advised yet. We're working on it, Matt Hancock said about the move, which would see the current 10 day isolation replaced by a daily uh, COVID-19 testing. And also as well for, for us here, that would mean you can come on holiday, then go home and not have to do any quarantine. That is what we want. And yes, you've got to do two tests before you go. And then obviously um, <clears throat> uh, you, you do two tests during the quarantine period in the UK, I think on the second and on the eighth day of all uh, madness. But again, we want to be on the green with no quarantine. Anyway, uh, Matt Hancock then said, although I didn't hear him say it, but I'm just right reading the writing. He said, when I'm in a position to be able to say something, then we will do. Uh, he continued, but it's absolutely something we're working on and it's something I want to see. The health secretary said the government was working on plans to essentially allow vaccine uh, to bring uh, some of the freedoms back that have been restricted to people for people to stay safe. Anyway, he added, after all, that's the whole purpose of a vaccination program. That's why it's so important that every adult goes out and gets the jab. Do you know what? The condescending attitude. Do you know what? He's the sort of person you just want to punch in the face, to be honest. Um, I just really, really am. Um, uh, people are sick of it. People People have done what's been asked of them in the UK. Uh, they've social distanced. They've had the jabs when they probably didn't want to have the jabs. Uh, all being told, oh, you'll be free. You'll be free. You'll be able to go out and hug granny and do this and do that. And, and it hasn't happened. And the way things are looking, it's not going to happen. However, 
Tonight, uh, tonight we've got the football on at Wembley again. Let's see uh, what social distancing is going to be going on. Let's see the uh, VIPs for football all there enjoying their game like uh, Caesar did uh, at the circus uh, during the time of the Romans where the old hoi polloi were down there and they're sat up there in the gods watching these guys battle out with a ball on the field. And somehow you think, do you know what? Two-tier system, one rule for you, another rule for me. And uh, you know what? It just makes me want to <laughs> shout. It really does. But anyway, uh, best of luck to England anyway. Uh, you need to win this game, lads, all right? Uh, and uh, again, uh, continue on. But anyway, that's by the by. Um, interestingly, uh, for those people who are aware, Jane's been back at work now for the uh, last few days. Uh, and uh, guess what? Uh, there was a nice little article in the Amira newspaper. I'm going to quickly read through the article, and it's all about uh, trips and tours here on the island. Uh, every year, many visitors from abroad uh, and from Greece want to know the wild beauty of the beaches of North Zakynthos. Every year, boats moored in Agia Ias Nikolaias in Volimes, up that end of the island, are full of people uh, this year, but due to the absence of the British, things are completely different. Anyway, members of the Boat Owners Association of North Zakinsot, uh, Mr. Costa Akapis, uh, spoke about the prevailing conditions, noting that everyone expects an increase in tourist traffic in the coming months. He said, uh, I think things are difficult because the British market is still closed. We heard that it might open on July the 19th. Of course, it may not open at all. The tourist season for the area of Ias Nikolaias is progressing smoothly, but we have visitors from Poland and Germany, but the absence of the British is a big blow. Anyway, he says, we believe that the opening will start, will, will shortly, sorry, we believe the opening will be short and that makes the season very, very difficult. Mr. Akapis uh, stressed the reduction in tourist traffic compared to previous years reaches 70%. Uh, there is traffic, but compared to 2019, the reduction is around about 70%. And last year, we worked very little. For those of us who work at Ias Nikolaias in relation to 2020, we have uh, one in June. We believe that the coming months will go well. The bet for us is for people to come in September and October, but because last year the season ended abruptly, uh, that was a blow. You might remember last year, uh, Tui couldn't make its mind up whether it was staying or whether it was going, and it was open and then shut, open and shut. And then when Tui left, oh, uh, they didn't pay uh, the money they're supposed to have paid to a lot of people uh, because Tui was having financial difficulties at the time. Still not sure whether anybody uh, who was using Tui actually got any of their money back. I'm talking about hoteliers here, by the way. Anyway, uh, the measure at the shipwreck, and I did ask Jane about this, uh, the measures at the shipwreck, uh, for the beach of the shipwreck, Mr. Apis said, uh, he noted that measures are now absorbed very strictly. Uh, there is the lifeguard uh, in the shipwreck now, and boys have been placed. Uh, what is set is observed, and there are no problems. The boats approach in order, as defined by the Port Authority, and also a special schedule for the stay and departure of boats is observed as well. Finally, he noted that the uh, mountainous Zakynthos of uh, Volimez and around that, that area he did say and i love the language of this he said this is chosen by the well-to-do tourists for their holidays and it is and this is why he explained june is going well he said we are waiting to see how things go but generally because in the area there are many villas that are chosen for their holidays by well-to-do tourists and in fact for a long time uh, things are a little better so there you go the money is here the money of renting the villas uh, uh, and uh, the well-to-do, uh, again, it's the two-tier system again, maybe, uh, of, of those that can afford it are coming here to have a holiday in isolation. And that's the great thing about Zakynthos, as I've said before. Our tourism market is very attractive to t holiday operators simply because we have a real good cross-section of tourism here on the island, from your bucket and spade, cheap tourism, 
up to your 10,000 euros a week uh, villa tourists uh, who want isolation and probably will come out and sprinkle a bit of money before disappearing back into their villa again. Um, interestingly, Jane did say that yesterday, uh, while she was on her guiding yesterday, uh, she met a very interesting Polish gentleman uh, who actually uh, works in the UK. And uh, he'd come on holiday and was very, very impressed with everything that he's seen. Uh, he's spending his money all on trips. He's not going in bars and restaurants. He's spending his money on trips. And uh, he's now thinking of maybe he might want to come and work here in Zakynthos because he's speaks Polish and uh, because he obviously sees that uh, there is an opportunity for him to find work here and of course he's not restricted in the way that the British uh, tourists are or the British uh, public are now restricted uh, since our Brexit. So there you go. Things are changing here and um, I think it's going to be a case of having to get with the program of change or being left behind. Right and finally um, a bit of a distressing story but I felt it needs to be aired. Um, one of the two lawyers that's defending the 33-year-old helicopter pilot who confessed last week to murdering his young wife in an Athens suburb, uh, one of the lawyers has actually resigned from the case yesterday. He said, um, his name is Vasily Spiru. He said, I, am, I no longer want to be involved with the defense of this case in any respect for personal reasons. Uh, and in a public resignation letter hours before the suspect was due to testify in the magistrate court, he obviously said, enough is enough, I resign. Anyway, uh, the defendant, Babis Anagolopoulos, uh, disposi uh, dis uh, disposition, that's the word, uh, was due to begin at 10 a.m. yesterday morning. and it's, uh, No, it's due to begin today at 10 a.m. and is expected to last several hours as he recounts his version of events that resulted in the death uh, by asphyxiation of, uh, he, of his 20-year-old wife, uh, Caroline Crouch, on May the 11th. Now, according to the lawyer, the, the suspect has already presented several different versions, including his original story to the to the police that Crouch was killed by burglars who had tied up him and he had hung the f and, and hung the family dog from a banister. Now he has since claimed that he killed Crouch while trying to prevent her from hurting herself and the baby and staged the scene to look like a burglary gone wrong while later admitting that he then killed the 20 year old in her sleep because she threatened to leave him. So uh, basically the lawyer, one of the lawyers has just had enough with the case and has decided that he cannot defend the man. Anyway, um, it, it was also suggested that Crouch may have threatened uh, Angapolis with divulging no knowledge of certain shady dealings uh, that he had been involved in. So we look at helicopter pilot, again, 30,000 euros stolen from the house. How many people have got 30,000 euros under their floorboards in their house? So again, uh, he again uh, basically he's gonna uh, basically uh, end up uh, in court anyway uh, Tuesday uh, yesterday they were also expected for the decision on which uh, two sets of uh, grandparents are to have custody of the one-year-old child and uh, who has obviously been placed uh, by Agus Polly's the defendant uh, with his uh, mother uh, with with her mother's dead, uh, I'm going to leave that out. Actually, basically, what they're doing is they're going to come to a decision about who's going to have custody of the child, and uh, we'll wait and see what 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 comes of that. Right. So there you go. That's the good and the bad. Uh, news from Greece. Uh, once again, thank you for those people tuning in. I'm just going to have a quick look, see who's looking in at the moment. Uh, Aaron Vardy is looking in. Uh, uh, Shane Bowen says, Gally Mayor of Wiggy Win Stanley, hope you are feeling well. Oh, bless you, Shane. That's nice. Uh, Paul Booty is watching him. <laughs> Somebody said, uh, join the queue, uh, Ginge. We all want to punch him in the mouth. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm not sure who said that. Uh, oh, it was Dave Matthews, uh, my old mate, Raff Reg buddy over there in... Uh, in, in uh, what you call it in, in in Oxford, he said, "Good morning." Was very poorly yesterday, so spent most of the day in bed. Uh, very well today, he says. I think I may have been doing too much. It was not the virus. That's just knackered. That's just uh, me knackered. I think. Oh, bless you. Um, also, as well, Andrew the Fridge Watkins is watching. Alf Ling is watching as well. Uh, Bernadette Berwick, Dave Matthews, uh, Wiggy Win Stanley over there in Cyprus is tuning in as well. Lovely to see you, fella. Uh, Tracy Mitchell 
says, morning, Ginge. Hope your head is feeling better. I think I've read that one out already. Uh, anyway, that's it. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, today is Jane's day off, so uh, we're going to go to the beach, I think, today. Not quite sure which beach we're going to go to, uh, but uh, we shall have a nice day of rest. Um, I've made all my shows for next week on Beats Radio. That is all done. So I'm a free agent. And of course, tonight we've got the football. Uh, so I probably will be popping into Magdalena's tonight uh, to take some little Vox Pops uh, from people, see how busy we are. Uh, and don't forget, Wednesday, tomorrow night, I'm going to do my live broadcast from the house. Uh, basically, uh, my reverse broadcast into Magdalena's. Uh, that'll go up on the screens uh, it'll also be recorded as well uh, so that they can play that as again anytime they like in the bar but again if you want to send any messages dedications requests to anybody uh, from Magdalena's bar uh, they love it actually they think it's brilliant oh and by the way that show uh, from last week the third uh, reverse show that basically got into the international global chart and I'm not sure which uh, which which category it was in but i would i got an email from uh, mixcloud saying congratulations dj ginge you are now whatever it was on the international global chart and i can't remember which was the category so once again it's a very popular show i'm so pleased about that but anyway i'm burbling now i better get on we still got things to do before we go out once again uh, thanks for tuning in also wiggy thanks fella Keep the faith. And uh, also, as well, at some point today, hopefully, I will get the uh, Northern Soul show from last week up online. Oh, and by the way, just to remind you, yesterday's uh, news broadcast, for some reason, YouTube would not accept it. I tried reloading that show maybe seven, eight times up until about 10 o'clock last night. I tried to reload that show, and for some reason, it would not upload onto uh, YouTube. I don't know whether it was... I think it was a technical difficulty with YouTube yesterday. I did have reports back from people saying that the Internet just worldwide yesterday was absolutely shocking. So, again, if I can get that uh, uh, broadcast up online today, I will, along with the broadcast I've just done now onto YouTube. I'll see if it will be accepted. And I, I'm very sorry for those people who watch via Twitter and those people who watch via uh, uh, LinkedIn and those people who obviously like just to watch on YouTube as well, uh, the broadcast, I, I do apologise, all right? But I will see what I can do and see if I can get it uh, get it up. Anyway, <laughs> that sounded a bit ominous. Uh, but anyway, I will, uh, I'll see you later. You take care. Have a beautiful day wherever you are. Uh, I can hear a cat meowing at the moment. I better go find out what's going on. I'll catch you later. Ta-ra.